Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Sandy Pro and today I am going to attempt to make cake pops. Have you ever heard of those? Apparently you probably have and I have never heard of them until I saw recently Sharon Wise do a video with her grandson and they made these little desserts. And I'm thinking, in my world at work, when you have to consider portion size and how many sweets people get, and we have lots of birthdays to celebrate, these things would be the answer to many, many portion size issues sometimes we face at my job. So I'm going to attempt to make cake pops. Yay! I made a vanilla cake. Uh, Betty, Cro Betty Crocker, super moist yellow cake actually, and I cooked that last night, and what we are going to use is only one of the two 8 inch round pans that I made to make these cake pops. I'm not making a whole lot because I don't have a birthday or a reason to other than to try. So come along with me and we'll get started. Here come the cake pops. It should be fun. Maybe a little sticky on the hands. Mmm. We'll find out. Okay. I started with a Betty Crocker Super Moist Yellow Cake Mix. I made two round cake pan. One I'm going to use for a different project and this one's for the cake pops. I should be looking for popsicle sticks, I mean excuse me, for lollipop sticks but the only thing I had in my house was more like tongue depressors. Um, and I'm going to use these instead. Then we need some frosting. So as you can see I have some pillberry vanilla frosting. I may add some food coloring to that just to give it a little interest and that's where we're going to start. After this process is done we will use some melted chocolate and some sprinkles. So you need to have chocolate and sprinkles as well if you choose to go that route. I'm going to get started putting my hands in there. I've already washed them and we're going to break this up very moist and cold because I've had it in the refrigerator. So I'm going to make pieces and I'm, I'm thinking the more that it is back to, I don't know, what do you want to say, crumbs state would be the better. Instead of big chunks, so I'm just going to roll them and try to make breadcrumbs or cake crumbs. I've got a large bowl, but as you can see, some of those crumbs are flying right over the edge. Yeah, I like that consistency. I didn't take the time to take off the crust of the cake. I suppose that would make the crumbs a little bit easier to make if there wasn't a crust on there, but it seemed to be going well. Tell you what, this is the first time I've ever done this with a cake before.
I have to get them nice and fine. <clears throat> Well, that's looking good to me, but I've never made them before, so I don't know if I should go any finer. Looking good. Looking good. Definitely not a cake anymore. So here's our vanilla frosting opened it up and we have a yellow cake to begin with. I don't know if it makes a difference what color the frosting is once you mix it all together but I'm throwing some yellow dye in there. Yellow cake, yellow dye. May not even make a difference. I don't even know how much frosting we're going to need. I anticipate probably a half a cup. Probably would have been more convenient to put it in a larger bowl, but I know I can do this in here because I've done it before. Just take a little extra time and mix it through. And if it doesn't mix all the way through, it's just a little swirly. And that's not bad. Okay. Nice and yellow. I'm going to bring this back over, our cake crumbs, and I really don't know how much this is going to be. First I'll give you a look at what I'm using for a small spatula. Put that amount in. And from what I understand, the object of this is just to get the crumbs to stay together. So you're going to want to put that in there and mix it. You want to sort of make a meatball or a cake ball into these pops. I have never put my hands in frosting before. But it's not sticking, so I think we need more frosting. Let's put it sticking to my fingers, but it's not sticking to the... Okay, how do I do this gracefully? Probably don't. Some more frosting. Okay, this <clears throat> seems to be adhering to my fingers quite well, so let's try a ball. I 
And we make them the size of a golf ball if you've got little children. Oh, that looks pretty good right there. What I've already done is prepared a baking sheet with some parchment paper. Um, so I've lined that to make the balls. Place them on that tray because we're going to need to refrigerate these for, I think, 15 minutes. Get them nice and cold. I'm just going to try to make them equally the same size. So, my other project that I plan to do with the other half of the cake is to make a pocketbook cake. Sometimes you just have a little girl in the family, you want to do something special to present her with a nice cake. And I've made one before, actually I've made three before. The cake in shape of pocketbooks. For the girly girl in your family. So that's another video for another time. But I'll put the link in to Sharon's video on cake pops and to my video on a pocketbook cake down below. I don't know. That one's too big. I don't know how successful you'd be doing <clears throat> this with a little one. It still is messy. Maybe you can just get them to help partially all the way through. I gotta give Sharon credit. She had her little grandson with her. Boy. She had more patience than probably I do. But he's a little cutie. Let's see, it's making quite a lot more than I thought, so I'm glad I'm using only half. Here we are. The cake pops have been in the refrigerator for 15 minutes. Let me show you those. So they've gotten nice and cold. We are going to take some Baker's chocolate. Where are we here? And warm it up in the microwave in 30 second increments until it's nice and smooth and we're able to cover those cake bulbs and we have some, I said sprinkles, but apparently they're called sequins. So forgive me for that. And I have my craft sticks, popsicle sticks, tongue depressions, whatever you wish. And I also have a piece of foam that I'm going to use to stick those pops in to hold them straight up as I process them. Hey guys, my first attempt didn't go so well with these coming out of the refrigerator. 
So, see, I got some chocolate mess over there, but I just had to clean it up. So, you know, I took it upon myself to just stick a spoon in there and cobble that up. So, what I'm going to try now is I'm going to take the stick once again, insert it in the chocolate, stick it into the cake ball. Not all the way through. At least I'm trying not to. You can see those. I hope you can. About halfway through. I'm going to stick them in the freezer this time. I think I'll have better luck. And now they're going in the freezer for 15 minutes. Okay, we're back with another attempt. We had to put our cake pops in the freezer because I was having a malfunction when they were in the refrigerator. They were falling off. But look at this now. We're just going to cover those with chocolate. And green off. And I'm stick it right here. I'll put it in the middle first. And sprinkles on top. If I were brave, so you can you see that? You can see that. Where can I put that? All right, where are you going? Right here. There. We'll try then. We have cake pop. Look at them there. Add some chocolate around the edge. Don't see how brave I am. Can I just stick it on top of the sequins? There. And there's our final cake pop. It took a while for me to get it right.